Okay, we are going to begin. Thank you for joining me today. Um, it's just a couple of minutes after seven, so we are going to get started. So if you have any questions, we'll save those towards the end, but we'll go ahead and get started with that. Today's um, chat is going to be building habits for better nutrition. And before I actually begin with this, I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Jackie. I'm a nutrition coach. I focus on the physical, mental, and spiritual nutrition. Um, I'm a mom of three, and I've lost over 100 pounds over my pregnancies of being a mom. And I know firsthand when I first dove in into this health journey, this weight loss journey, I didn't know what I was doing. I was overdoing it. I was not happy with the way I looked. I was tired. I was feeling all of the things that you feel when you don't know what to do. And so my mission here is to serve women who really want to start making changes in their lives and really don't know where to start. Maybe you've had tried different things and just want to and have decided that they want something better. And I want to be that support for them. I'm a certified transformation nutritional coach and specifically got my certification in weight loss. And so before I begin, of course, Anything I provide to you is educational purpose only, you know, please cooperate with your health professional or your, you know, doctor, if you're changing, you know, or starting any diet or exercise plan It's always to consult with your doctor if you're unsure if this is like a really good fit for you. So that's my little spiel before we begin. And so we're first gonna dive in into what, what we know about eating right. We should focus on whole foods like fresh fruits, vegetables, nuts, you know, things like that. If we're eating animal products, technically, I would definitely recommend to go organic, you know, free from antibiotics, you know, and hormones, try grass fed, free range. All of those things are really good for you, wild caught fish. Um, but of course, those things tend to be a little bit more expensive. So if you're opting out completely, just go for the regular chicken, just go for the regular tomatoes or apples, you know, it's gonna be better to get those whole foods in you anyways. And what we know about nutrition, I wanted to dive in a little bit about nutrition because some of you may not know what our nutrition consists of, what are the labels, you know, what are what are the things, you know, what are they for? And so just a little brief thing um, before we dive into our habits today. So our food is placed in three different categories called macronutrients, and they are divided in three different types. So we have carbs, proteins, and fats. And so Carbs are really our, our main source of energy, providing and fueling our body. Now, when we hear carbs, you know, don't run away from them. Our body truly needs them. We need all of these things, right? So some examples of carbs are oats, bananas, rice, potatoes, um, protein, are and so things like that. Protein is where our muscles require to build and repair our hormones, collagen, enzymes are all made of proteins. So super important. Some examples of proteins are fish, legumes, beef, yogurt, you know, cottage cheese. I know there's a lot of people that may be vegetarian or, you know, all of those things. So they're very specific on what they need to eat or what can't eat. So those are just a few examples. Um, 
Hi, welcome. And so we are just going over some nutrition stuff before we dive in into our habits. And so lastly, part of our macronutrients are also fats. And so we need all of these things. Help actually, fats actually help us absorb vitamins more efficiently and are another energy source for our body. Some examples of that is like oil, nuts, butters, and so on. And basically what I wanted to talk about nutrition is, you know, some of the foods can have multiple types of nutrients. Sometimes we hear we need protein, we need this, we need that. And to be honest, a lot of these foods have a little bit of everything. So for example, eggs have fat and protein, avocados have carbs and fats, um, lentils have carbs and protein. So you get a mixture of all of these. And the most important thing is to really focus on whole foods and eat a variety of the three macronutrients. There's no such thing as bad carbs or fat is bad for you. So as long as we're feeding our bodies what they need, it's going to be very sustainable for us to keep you know, doing this. And it really starts with the small changes in ma making small habits. So you can stay consistent in the long term. So making habits easy for you, simple for you, so you can maintain a good, healthy lifestyle. And so things that might get in the way, um, maybe why it's hard for us to maintain a healthy lifestyle or things that might come up is negative comments from our family, our friends that can discourage us. It's easier to make unhealthy choices when we're eating or visiting fast food restaurants. And we can really get overloaded with new information about certain foods, new fad diets out there, you know, maybe being told something different every day or what really works, keto works, no high protein, you know, all of these things can really confuse us and make it difficult to make certain choices. And sometimes, you know, we're, we know we're eating the wrong foods. We're eating fried foods. We're eating fast foods. We're eating lots of sugar. Um, and we're tired. We don't have enough hours in a day. If you have kids, it could be difficult to do all of those things. And all of these choices can have negative emotions that leads us to maybe making poor food choices, and those poor food choices can cause us to feel negative emotions such as guilt and shame. And so this is where the meat and potatoes of our presentation is today. How to break old habits. So, you know, some bad habits that we might have is staying up, scrolling on our phone, um, hindering our sleep. Um, and to be honest, to make these changes, to really make an impact and live a healthy lifestyle, you got to realize that being healthy is not a four-week program, it's not a three-week challenge, it's not a diet, it's really a lifestyle change. And one of the main things that we have to learn to do is confront with our you know, confront our emotions and address what we're feeling because that could be holding us back. We can be letting our emotions um, react a certain way and how we react is how we behave and those results that come from those actions are not the best if we're reacting solo on our emotions. And we have to understand, we really have to believe that your lifestyle you deserve this lifestyle, that you deserve to be healthy, you deserve to feel good in your own skin, you deserve to feel the best you. And sometimes we're afraid to ask for help. We're afraid that we don't know what's going on, we might not have the patience. Um, and sometimes we have to really reconsider what are our goals? Um, what do we want to do? Because as a society, I really believe that we are very visual. So if we see like a really thin person, we want to compare ourselves, right? We have that opportunity to do that uh, nowadays with social media. And we follow these people and, oh, you know, they're healthy because they're skinny or look at all their muscles. And we see that and we compare ourselves and we really have to start asking why. 
and improving how we see ourselves because we really have to change that belief that we deserve more than what we're doing now. And it's really truly improving those small qualities in ourselves and how we deal with stress and how we deal with our emotions, with our sleeping, because there's so many other ways than measuring health, not just by someone that looks super skinny and just automatically thinking that they are in good health because they might not be. So that is one step on how to break old habits. So let's get to the meat and potatoes of the habits that you really need to create to change your nutrition. And number one is, if you wanna write these down, I definitely recommend to write them down, is really being clear. If you're making a choice, stopping and thinking, why do I wanna make these changes? Why do I wanna live a healthy lifestyle? Why am I eating so much? Or why did I have those you know, six cookies? Or you know, asking yourself these questions is really how we're going to start making those changes. And also finding somebody that's going to support you, that's going to have your back, because you have your back, but sometimes you need that support, whether it be a coach, a trainer, a friend, a spouse, you know, whoever it is, that support is going to be so helpful. But number one is being clear on what you want to do. Number two is really sticking to your guns, but also have compassion for yourself. So this one's a little tricky because in most cases, we don't eat right, like I mentioned earlier, because of our emotions, because our social obligations, we don't believe in ourselves, you know, we don't have the confidence that we can achieve those goals. We might feel like staying consistent might be a weakness. Like, again, like I said, we don't believe that we can do that. And number one, we got to be clear on what we're trying to do. So we need to listen to ourselves, be really connected enough with our emotions to do the right thing. Because if we just go on what we're feeling, those results are definitely going to be very different if we just stop and think of why we're feeling that way and maybe changing the outcome, but just stop and thinking, right? Because confronting these negative feelings and realizing that we have, you know, if we're making these bad habits and these eating choices has nothing to do with our emotions, we will have so much control and not punish ourselves when we make a mistake, when we're not perfect, when we are, you know, feeling down. So stick to your guns, but have compassion with yourself. So number one, be clear. And number two, stick to your guns, but have compassion for yourself. Number three is one of my favorites, because this is where we start really working on really actionable, doable things is starting your day right. You know, I believe really that morning habits make a huge difference on how you go about your day, whether it be drinking water, whether it be exercising, you know, making your right breakfast, you know, meditating, whatever it is, morning habits have such a huge impact on your rest of the day, on how you feel, on what you might crave, on what you might do, on what you might feel. And it really starts with the morning and having a good morning ritual and habit. So instead of starting with maybe like a donut or a muffin, you know, maybe start with some more higher protein or maybe adding some veggies or low glycemic foods like, for example, blueberries, grapefruits, oats can really be broken down more slower and cause that you know, gradual rise in blood sugar levels, because if you're eating a donut, your blood is going to like spike up. And if you're just going to go and sit in a car and drive, obviously you're going to start feeling sleepy. I know by like, I used to work at a pediatric office and by three o'clock, which is after lunchtime, everybody was tired, sleepy, yawning, because they feel that hit. If they had a really heavy, those enchiladas with rice and a soda, you know, you crash, your body crashes, and you're like needing a nap at 3 p.m. And so to avoid those feelings, to avoid all those crashes, and, you know, avoiding that third or fourth cup of coffee, you really need to learn to see how food is making an impact in your body. And this is just one way to do it. It's just making better 
breakfast choices. So you're not having to overcompensate over later with additional cups of coffee so you can stay up. <laughs> and I know, for example, I'm not here to talk about exercise, but I definitely do incorporate um, strength building exercises, you know, fasted walks um, a lot first thing in the morning. There are studies that show that women lose more belly fat when they work out in the morning, specifically like lower body workouts than they do in the evening. Now, the changes were very minimal, but the mornings seem to make more impact, especially to women. So that's something that consider to do for your health, if you have time, if it fits in your schedule. But of course, these are all quick tips that you can do, not necessarily do all of them at once, you know, choose one and get so good at it that, you know, you feel comfortable, you don't even think about it. So these are just ways that you can move and eat to start feeling better right away. And you really see the difference when you stick to it for a while, and you start stacking those habits to really feel and start seeing results for yourself and really starting to see how, oh, this feels good or, oh, I, I didn't need that extra cup of coffee today or I actually slept well, you know, last night. You'll start noticing these little things and it's all because of just small little changes that you're here. And again, just adding them as you go when you feel comfortable to add something because when you want to do everything at once, you're going to feel like, you're overwhelming, like you can't do this, like this is too hard. And my goal is not to bring that upon you, is to make it super easy, super simple. And again, it's just stacking these conditions in your favor so you can have faster results. Now, one more thing about starting your day right is last thing is staying hydrated is such a good tip. You know, staying hydrated helps with cravings, with feeling tired, you know, it really helps your body digest better when you start with a good glass of water. Now, it can be eight ounces, 30 ounces, there's so much, whatever you can do in the morning. Personally, I like 20 ounces of water in the morning with a little bit of lemon. And the reason for that is because it really helps with digestion. And it starts blowing those fluids in your stomach where whenever you are ready to eat your stomach is already working and churning those things in there so it's preparing for when food actually comes and you'll be prepared for when digestion is ready to happen now number four is eating mindfully practicing mindfulness now i think this is one of the hardest ones out of everything that you could possibly do because we are inundated with schedules, with texts, with TV. Um, and so we never really sit and be with eat oneself. For example, you know, I'm a mom, I stay home with my kids, I'm always with him. So I don't have really time for myself if I'm eating on the go, or I'm feeding him, or I'm on my phone working, multitasking, you know, or on the road, whatever it is, it's, I think it's one of the hardest things to do. And I really like to incorporate this because even just you know, remembering to be mindful is such a good victory. And so what is eating mindfully? It's really practicing and really getting to know you and why you're doing certain things about how you eat, right? You really pay attention to that eating and drinking experience. You know, you pay attention to all of the five senses, including texture, the flavor, the color, the temperature. Sometimes we just inhale our food and don't even remember, you know, what we eat, you know, if we just swallowed it whole, you know, really take some time to chew. And, you know, if you think about it and stop and say, okay, I'm going to chew like 15 times. Uh, to be honest, I challenge you that's going to be so hard to do because we are not used to doing that. And so it is a great exercise for you to kind of slow down and connect with yourself because also eating mindfully, you can tell more when you get fuller faster, you know, taking your time, you might eat less and really digestion start with our, you know, mouth. And even before it's necessary for us to 
practice this so we have proper digestion and we can absorb all of the minerals and all the nutrients that we need from the food that we're eating. Because if we're swallowing whole, we're not getting the best of it out of our food. Number five is being aware of our meal time. So like I said, we are a very busy world where, you know, have things and schedules and things to so many things to do. You know, we really find it hard. We, you know, I've heard people say we find it hard to meal prep, to, you know, go work out, to rest, to do this, take the kids to practice, all of those things. And it really takes time and awareness. So, like I said, just because it's meal time and there's food available, that doesn't mean that your body needs food or, you know, sometimes it's just that social connection that you might, you know, desire and there's food available. So you feel like you have to eat and it can be really hard to not do that. You know, for us a mom, you know, maybe snacking or eating the kids leftovers. That's something that's even difficult for me because when I throw things away, I feel like I'm throwing money away. So, you know, learning to really have that self-control and ask yourself starting with number one is being clear. Number two, you know, really sticking to your guns. If you already ate, you don't need to be snacking. Um, if you ate a really good proper meal and having that self-control. Number three, which we said starting your day right. And number four, eating mindfully. And again, we're here at number five, being aware of our meal time, which is a great recommendation also to avoid eating right before bedtime. Give yourself a couple of hours between dinner and going to sleep because when digestion is happening, your body temperature does tend to rise and your sleep might not be the best sleep but that's just for some people. Like I said, sometimes after having big meals, heavy meals, we feel sleepy. And so that can be for someone. For, for most, I've noticed that, you know, not eating right before bedtime can definitely lead to much more quality sleep. So if that's you, either or, you'll have to test that out yourself to really see how you sleep better. And number six is, you know, we often feel the need to rush, not be mindful, to move quickly, you know, from one activity to the other. And again, this, you know, people who work, who have kids, you know, I feel like we feel like there's never enough time to do everything. And we forget to make ourselves a priority. And we really should be at the top of our to-do list. This happens in many different aspects um, of our lives. You know, we, you know, lose quality sleep when we are with our kids in through the nights. We don't get enough quality sleep. And we need sleep to recover, you know, to improve our you know recovery to improve our cravings you know when our sleep suffers we are not all there and our cravings tend to increase so that can be where you find that support that help um for changing your schedules big changing things out really improving the quality of your sleep maybe dimming the lights not being on your phone um, um anything that could change that dynamic between, you know, improving that sleep hygiene. And to be honest, sleep is number one for me in my coaching program. It is something that we work on and is the number one thing that we work on. Why? Because without sleep, our body can't, you know, recover. It can't let, you know, we lose the fat that we need to lose. We don't feel our best. We feel sluggish and we don't function as we should. And honestly, sleep is something that a lot of people feel like they need to sacrifice or can't sacrifice. And if you don't get anything out of this exercise or this, you know, class today is figure out how to get better quality sleep. And again, that's something that we work on in our coaching program and we figure out steps and ways that we can make the best sleep for you based on your schedule, your needs and your life in general. 
So if you're tired, I know, for example, I hear a lot of things with my clients and I hear this all the time, you know, they're tired of the diets that only focus on what to eat or how to lose weight, but don't focus on the whole you, right? Or you're having a hard time trying to work up the energy. You don't have the motivation. You don't believe in yourself and you're wanting to change, but nothing's happening and really you might feel like you're dedicating all the uh, all your time to maybe your family, to work, and it's really hard to put yourself first. Maybe you feel like there's not enough hours in the day. You know, if you have, you know, you work a lot or have multiple children or have a lot of things going on, don't know how to deal with that. You know, if you hear all of this information, like I said, there's a lot of information in social media. There's a lot of information in the news. You hear this is good. This is bad. And so you feel overwhelmed or maybe you do want to start with good intentions, but you feel like you fall off the wagon and that tends to be a cycle for you. And of course, I would love to help you, you know, to change if you're ready to experience a way of eating where I really would like to change the relationship that you have with food because that's going to create long term goals through a simple done for you, you know, morning habits that will eliminate all of the food drama to eat delicious foods that are nourishing and filling and we we'll really get rid of those cravings I want to add energy and you know balance connection with your body of course lose the weight and keep it off forever right where we're not yo-yoing back and forth and really gain that confidence in yourself to finally feel better in your own skin and to not feel guilty when you are indulging in certain events in certain foods no matter what it is you know, I did want to talk to you about the Habitual Sunrise program, which is the coaching program that I am offering to you guys today. And if you know of anyone that might be interested, it is a step-by-step -step morning habit guide to lose weight. Number one, first part of the coaching program is we focus on our mental nutrition. We strategize in changing your stories, your beliefs, so you can make permanent changes in your life. The second part of the program is we focus on physical nutrition, you know, how to treat your body, how to feed your body. So if you're trying to lose weight, we can do that through nutrition and movement. We have free, you know, free check-ins. We meet weekly. We have coaching calls and we have that lifestyle decoder to really personalize your protocol to your individual needs and help you be accountable. And the third part of this coaching package is we focus on the inner connection you have with yourself and with others, right? We learn to make yourself a priority and manage different strategies so that you can stay consistent and not feel overwhelmed when life happens. So I want to review real quick, you know, this program will give you everything you need to lose the weight, keep it very simple, step by step, done for you, habitual program is sustainable with doable results, lifetime use, everything I'm you know, giving you, you'll be able to have. And we focus on habits that really dive into mental, physical, and spiritual inner nutrition. Because food is not the only way we feed our bodies. And it's crucial to have all three. So the link on how to schedule will be below. I want to thank you for coming to the class and those who had to step out. I completely understand. So let me see if I can exit here. And here we go. But thank you again for joining me and I hope you learned a lot today. If you have any questions, please shoot me an email and I would love to respond to you in any way that I can help. So I will talk to you guys next time. Thank you for joining. Bye.